Hi guys, Kim here. Welcome to Backyard Blooms. In today's video, we're doing part two of my full August garden tour. We're going to take off on this side garden here where we left off in part one, and we're going to do the full front garden as well. If you like my videos and you have not subscribed to my channel, please subscribe. It's free to subscribe. It's just another word as I'm following you and you'll get updates on my upcoming videos. In the next coming videos, we're going to plant some echinaceas, which is another word as coneflower, and some gorgeous variegated sedum. <laughs> Part of my bush over here had died, so I'm not sure this one's going to make it, but it has life right now. There's the blooms on that. This is another type of juniper here, two different varieties. This one is called Golden. The more sun it gets, the more golden it gets. Then I have some salvia over here. The red bloom. And the more that you cut the deadheads off these, the more blooms you'll get back again. My magnolia tree. And I have an obelisk here from Garden Supply that I have two. climbing vines that are coming off of it. This is the lemon appeal and coconut appeal. This black-eyed Susan vine has a hard time get going, but as everything else is looking tired, this one is starting to look good. And here's a little bit of the uh, obelisk, what it looks like. It's about a six feet obelisk. And I have another butterfly 
bush here. And not too long ago, we cut all these dead blooms off and they are looking great. Has some daylilies in here. You can see the bubblegum super petunia over there. And I have some denim and lace. For those of you that watch Laura with Garden Answer, she loves the Russian denim and lace, which I love hers too, but for me they're not doing as well as what they do for her. So maybe they like cooler nights and not the hot humid here. That's what mine look like. And these have been in here for two years. And you can see I have some fire ants right there that I need to take care of. You guys can see them, but if you disrupt them, you can see them like crazy. You guys see that? I need to treat that. Early in the spring, I treat my grubs with a product called Duicide from Anderson's, and that kills the fire ants too, but we've had a lot of rain lately, and maybe it only works for a couple months, so I need to get some more Duicide and treat for fire ants and also the army worms for my grass, and I'll put some of these flower beds too. This juniper with this baptisia looks great. This is serendipity alliums. It's the onion family. And I wish that I had these where I could see them more. I love these. To make a bigger impact, plant three to five, like I have here. up this way, another juniper, another denim and lace. This is basil. You can see a bee. I thought it was sleeping. And that's bloomed. I need to get those blooms off there. You're not supposed to keep the blooms on basil. And the Charles Darwin Rose. This one, this rose doesn't open all the way fully, but I like something different. These are approving winners. Tomato plant. I need to give that some fertilizer. This is a proven winners plant right there with this yellow. yellow in my garden and then some tea olives and some bubble gum petunias there I had some sweet alyssum in there but I don't know maybe it didn't get enough sun this is another pairing in my butterfly bush with that tall phlox this picture. If you took a picture of this combination right there, it's so pretty. And some daylilies over there. And on the other side over there, I have a container with the Proven Winners Berry Treasure straw Strawberries. spent bloom for the birds. And this is the second year. It's a perennial. So I need to pick up my old spent blooms from my hardy hibiscus here. And this is bee balm. And this is the first time I've seen 
flowers on that. I used to have several and I pulled some up because it gets powdery mildew for me really bad. And I'll show you what powdery mildew looks like. This one has it on there. That's what powdery mildew looks like. Sometimes it's even worse than that. You can treat that with a copper fungus. Like I've sprayed these two over and over. And this is my hardy hibiscus here. I have two, one in the front and one here. And like I said, these blooms only last one day, but there's so many new buds that are coming out all the time. But it always looks like it's in bloom. You would never know that they just last one day. And this week is summerific week. With these hardy hibiscus, they're a proven winter plant. And Walter's Garden grow them. And then on the side here, we have some lavender. Which I'm thinking it probably doesn't get enough sun. And I need to trim that back because part of this is dying here. Or replant that one. I love this plant, but they've not really done really well for me, so I might need to try a different type of lavender. And then my side here, I really haven't developed this area yet, but plan to. So I have two of the limelight standard trees here. One here and one down there. This is all my timers for my drip for this side. You can see my hoses running along the house here. If you don't like that look, you can bury them underneath the grass. I really haven't worked on this side garden, the grass either, because I don't want to waste my time. I'm going to put it all in mulch. And then I have another David Austin Rose climber here. And I'm also going to put a trellis up. I'll show you what this bloom looks like. Right there. It's a smaller bloom. And again, you can see that there's a cluster here that are all dead. So this needs to be deadheaded. And let's see, I'm going to come back to this set of leaves right there. Uh, maybe even down a little bit lower. And just cut those off right there. And I'll just cut that whole thing off. As you can see, it's just one big cluster of spent blooms there so I need to deadhead this bush as well and this one was replanted so I have some deadheads there a lot of them that I need to get so we'll come back later on today and do that too and this is the limelight tree that I told you has all the heavy blooms on it because they weren't sturdy enough to hold them. They're massive blooms. Now I'm on the porch here. This is the other side of the bubblegum petunias that are in this wrought iron containers there. My husband built this little sturdy it's not really a shepherd's hook, but it's a version of a shepherd's hook there. And here is the strawberries from Proven Winners. So they come out with a little bloom and then have strawberries on them. You can see one right here. So I got this little container from Jenny at Creekside as well and Michael Carr, the same one with the um, Aquapots has designed these from Proven Winners. And then I have three David Austin roses right here and those are the Charles Darwin that I just show you, showed you a bloom from. See, there's another spent bloom there. 
I can take it down to set a Lisa 5 and just trim it there. Same with this. So we'll go to a set of five leaves and trim that off. Set of five. And here, set of five. And here, set of five. And this is what this bloom looks like right there. It's supposed to be a yellow rose, but to me it looks peach. I don't know if it's our soil. And a little water feature. And I have a hummingbird feeder here. And there's little Miss Pris. She's protective of this little hummingbird feeder. made me this blown glass right there and on this other side I have some bubble gum petunias and my planter there I have a palm black eyed it's not black eyed black super tape so in this pot here, I have black potato vine, impatiens, and a palm. If you could hear my sprinklers on. So for this sprinkler, I have it on a timer. I'm sorry about this, I was deadheading this morning. As you can see, we have a sprinkler there and it waters the whole entire backyard here. And I have it set at 10.15 every morning for 15 minutes. And it keeps this grass looking pretty happy here. Again, everything's on drip that I have. All these flower gardens are on drip, and I have a video on that if you'd like to learn how. And you can see this bloom here on the potato vine. And this is a proven winner's phlox that I really like, and I'll do that again. And then some of the spent blooms from the cake pops. Hotel butterfly, wine and roses. And I have three containers that are concrete. And I wanted a little bit of height but didn't want to spend a lot of money, so I went to these are my concrete pots. Look at this bee and immersing himself in those flowers. That is funny. You see the pollen on its butt? <laughs> and these are the blooms that the potato vine put off. Jazzberries, but they're liking that bloom on the potato vine. I was telling you I wanted some height so I went and got these just regular concrete pavers and I stacked them three or four four high I think one of them's underneath the ground there so I can give me some height on these concrete containers concrete can be quite expensive and we pruned these nepeta bat not too long ago and look how big they've already gotten with some new blooms.
bird feeder down there again. This is the beautiful Boscobel. this Mexican petunia also in bloom here. And this is a perennial also. And this was a little twig, so this is its second year. And it's also doubled in size. This is my cut flower garden. Looks a little sparse here because I had some sunflowers. So I can actually come back in here and plant a few more seedlings in this area. I have a couple more packets, so I'm probably going to do that a little bit later. But these are zinnias. A lot of different varieties of zinnias in here. That's a queen lime series. This might be the salmon. That's another type of queen lime too. They'd be just a tad bigger. Another variety. my sunflowers. If I pulled it all up it would it was gonna pull a lot of these zinnias up because I tried it and it didn't really work well for me so the more that you deadhead these zinnias as well they'll produce more flowers also. There's one there. It's a different color. about ready to bed out here. Go to the other side. Well, that's what these are looking like up close here. They say that once you buy a zinnia, you never have to buy another one again. So I'm going to take these spent blooms and let them dry. And at the end of the petals will be another... This is not, not very dry, but you can see that here. Can you see that? This arrow... This arrow here at the very end is going to be another seed. So I'm going to try that this year. Maybe that will save me some money and have to re not buy so many seeds over. There's another from Seed. I have lots of Cosmos in here. Different colors. Cosmos, this lilac. Pink fuchsia color here. It's pretty. Eusenia. I enjoy giving away bouquets.
to my neighbors, if I'm going somewhere and I need to take something, I'll make a little bouquet for a little thank you gift. And I'll use all these flowers along with some of my hydrangeas and dahlias. Deadhead all these. Cosmos there. For the life of me, I can't remember what these flowers are right now. One's amaranth, and another one is celosia. I believe this is the celosia here. like a fruit punch celosia. Some down here too. These are smaller zinnias right there. Pretty color, that lilac. That one. And over here, some more zinnias as well. tell like this one right here is pretty spent. You can see all these little there we go. See all the seeds on there? I'll just put them over here and see if they'll replant. Reseed. And that one's almost spent as well. Over here too. So if I let this dry, I'll probably have more seeds. So I'm gonna take that one in there and let it dry. So I'm pretty sure that's Celosia. If I'm wrong, I'll put the name up if I'm wrong. And I believe this is Amaranth right here. Probably should cut this before it gets that long. That size would look good in a container. There's some more. You can see that stink bug right there. You can see that. Pop of color with these jazzberry super petunias from Proven Winners. And some containers. And some of these flowers are starting to look a little weary because of the heat. We have some of the newly Norcolius and the Rock and Fusia Salvia. Those little blooms on that. Splinter Boxwoods trim this way back and I need to give that some plant food after we finish this video. Another planter here. Juniper topiary tree. And this is cat's pajamas nepeta. The birds keep making a mess out of my mulch. begonias here. Some more boxwoods. And then we have some viburnum. And these jazzberries have mingled in 
with that plant there. This coleus is on fire and is covering up my azalea back there. So I need to trim these back a little bit more. Salvia, need to trim these blooms back. They're kind of going out of bloom. Another viburnum here and another zellia back there. Some topiary boxwoods along with my Japanese maple. And another topiary boxwood back there that's hidden from this coleus. This coleus is almost as big as me. over there, pillows, and wreaths on the front porch, and David Austin Rose has gone crazy, everybody asks me how I get this hibiscus to be so big, and I haven't done anything other than fertilize it in the spring. And I believe it does so well because it just likes this spot. This front garden stays more wet than any other garden. So I just think it likes this space and it's happy. We'll get closer to these blooms. This is a proven winner's hardy hibiscus. This is concrete edging. And then we have a holly here. And you can see my David Austin roses peeking up above that. Rose all the way up there. This is a climbing rose called Lady of the Lake. all those heavy blooms that are drooping on my limelight hydrangea standard. These are those trees that are already trimmed the canopy back in a prior video so make sure you watch that video. There's the front door. Of course I painted this front door to give it some accent as well. And then the rocking chairs on the front porch. These hummingbird pillows, these are made for outdoor. We've had to paint these rocking chairs a couple of times. We've had them for several years. And then the Reese these came from Target a couple of years ago. There's that same hydrangea tree. I have a camellia. This is a shishi camellia that has bright pink blooms. And even though I've had this camellia in this pot for a couple of years, it's doing well. It was a big, big planter when I put this little shrub in there to begin with, so it had a lot of room for roots to grow. And you could see all these buds. So I'm excited to share that video with you guys when it's winter time and nothing else is blooming and I'll have this gorgeous hot peak blooms on this camellia here. I'm a zone 8, so camellias do well for me. And then this is the wild and crazy David Austin Rose here. And this is the other side of this maple tree here. Boxwoods. 
it's getting a little wooly, but that's great. It shows me that it's growing. And the other boxwood over here. And some blooms here as well. This is the blooms from the Lady of the Lake. Just dainty little blooms. I can show you this one too. Not as big as my other David Austin roses, but it's just a different kind of rose. have some planters here that are just looking tired. Salvia has gone out of bloom. And I keep pinching these back and they do keep producing new blooms for me. I have a jazzberry here and this accent plant, Plum Dandy. But this Plum Dandy as an accent has got bigger than any of the other plants and I'm going to show you in a different container how big it's gotten but yeah it's just looking tired I trimmed back this plum dandy and this jazzberry so I just need to give it some plant food I think it'll start looking better Boxwoods. I'm trying to make a little hedge out of these boxwoods here. When all these jazzberry super petunias are gone, this is what's going to give me my winter interest there. Of course, this new Lenoir is just so pretty. It's a gorgeous color. If you're looking for ideas next year, it pairs really well with Jazzberry. It has more of a blue lilac bloom on it. And this is my planter that's up front. I do not have any kind of drip to this. This is an aqua pot. Aqua pots are great if you do not have access to drip. This container holds enough water in this hot summer for at least a week. This is what the pot looks a little closer here, just to give you an idea. And there's a little drainage hole. Whenever you fill it, you cannot overfill because then it, the water will come out of this drainage hole right there. Jazzberries are just mixing in good. With this accent plant here, this plum dandy. And I wanted to show you how big it's gotten. Just step back. It's massive. I just cannot believe that it grew this big. In an upcoming video, we're going to take this out because you can't even see any of my wrought iron topiary in there anymore. So we're going to take this out and plant something new. And it takes us back on the same side that we started with on part one of the part two video. I'm going to tell you guys what I'm going to do with this melgranite. It's going to be quite a hack. I have some biotone here that I'm going to give my dahlias some plant food with and some biotone. And as I said in the next coming video, we're going to plant these up. I want to share you with you guys if you're struggling with these super petunias and it's in the high 90s and it's hot and they're looking burnt. This is the difference of a super petunia 
that is not on drip. This side's doing just a little bit better. But this area just gets watering from me and whatever when it rains. So if you're struggling with these super petunias looking dry and all burnt up, I encourage you to put in drip system. And I have a video explaining exactly how to do that in a prior video.